There's a huge debate taking place on the left. Even European viewers are watching this. Um, and it's between uh, voting for Joe Biden uh, or voting for uh, Donald Trump, who is the lesser evil. For example, Noam Chomsky has repeatedly stated that um, big, small differences in huge power um, can have large effects. And with that, I'm trying to say that he thinks that um, Joe Biden is the lesser evil because there is more ch channels available to the public to influence policy under a Biden presidency. Uh, Biden signed the Iran deal which uh, under Obama and even things like that Trump did uh, was not done under the Obama administration, uh, which includes the arms treaty INF, which was signed to limit uh, uh, nuclear weapons uh, with the ranges of 500 to 5,500 kilometers. And we also saw the um, complete dissolution and abolition of the climate change treaty. Uh, how do you see this? Uh, do you think that Biden, given this track record that I mentioned, uh, uh, is a better president uh, than Donald Trump? Or do you view them as being part of the same coin? Look, the the ruling elites made it very clear during the election, and there were a series of articles in the New York Times where they stated this, that if primarily Sanders, but Warren or Sanders, but primarily Sanders was the Democratic Party nominee, they would vote for Donald Trump. Um, this whole notion of the least worst only applies to us, not to them. Uh, they ensure that whatever candidate is in there uh, Trump, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama protects the interests of the global oligarchic elites uh, and corporate power. Uh, of course, they prefer Biden, just as they preferred Clinton. Uh, Trump is patently inept and a narcissist and, uh, you know, an embarrassment to the empire. Uh, but they know full well that the maintenance of empire will be carried out, whether it is Trump or Biden. Uh, I, of course, Noam Chomsky is, uh, and I know Noam and like Noam very much, he is our most important intellectual, but he has for, uh, you know, always repeated this mantra of voting for the least worst. Uh, in fact, what that has done in terms of those of us who care about an open society and equality and racial justice has rendered or neutered our effectiveness because the Democratic Party knows full well that it doesn't matter what they do. Uh, we will uh, comply. We will uh, surrender whatever values we have. Uh, t you know, the whole anti-war movement, which I was part of, uh, collapsed once Kerry ran, was the Democratic nominee, because we had to get Kerry elected. Um, and so if you don't put pit power against power, if you don't put pressures on the center of power, you just move irrevocably further and further to the right. I mean, the Democratic Party in Europe would be considered a far right party. Uh, and this is the problem that, that, that I think that the Democratic Party or those who care about the working class within the Democratic Party should have walked out of the party when Bill Clinton signed NAFTA in 1994, which was the greatest betrayal of the American working class since the passage of the 1948 Taft-Hartley Act. Uh, so we didn't. We didn't stand with the working class. We betrayed the working class. We busied ourselves with kind of boutique activism, inclusiveness and multiculturalism. I'm not in denying that that's all important. It is important uh, that people have rights, whether that's uh, gender rights or anything else. Uh, but you can't divorce that from economic justice. And so now you have given rise to these proto-fascist forces gathering around Trump. Uh, largely comprised of a betrayed white working class, and they have been betrayed. Uh, and their uh, vitriol is especially fierce uh, towards the Democratic Party, which traditionally had at least taken into account their interests. Uh, and so that's the problem. Uh, so if you look at it in the short term, would Biden be better than, than Trump? Yeah. Uh, but th the fact is the mess we've gotten into is because progressives and the left didn't stand with the working class uh, as it was being decimated. And that working class found its voice in a demagogue like Trump. And that isn't going to change. I mean, Trump is the symptom. Trump is not the disease. I saw that in the former Yugoslavia when we vomited up these figures like Radovan Karadzic and 
Slobodan Milosevic and Franjo Tuzman. That's what happens when society sees up and a cabal takes power. You can go back and look at Weimar. Exactly the same kind of situation. I'm not saying that Trump is Hitler or the Nazis. That's not. But there are lessons to be learned from a dysfunctional, decayed society. And everybody forgets, which is also true in the United States, that the erosion of the rule of law in Germany uh, was carried out by Ebert because of the negative majorities within the Reichstag, uh, the inability to uh, function, uh, to the legislative process didn't function. Ebert had decree after decree after decree. Well, this also happened in the United States. Uh, and of course, it's what the Nazis used to consolidate power, but they weren't the first to use it. It had been normalized. Uh, so uh, the the problem is that the, the, the political system no longer functions. Uh, it's dominated by corporate money. Uh, the legislation is written by corporate lobbyists, including the latest quote unquote stimulus package was directed and written by corporate lobbyists. Uh, and the whole consent of the governed is a joke. Uh, politicians need such massive amounts of money in order to run and stay in office. Uh, where are they going to get it? Uh, it's just a, a form of legalized bribery. Uh, and so the danger, and, and I know I'm is not doing this, but the danger it, it, with reducing it to who do you vote for is to personalize a, a dysfunctional political system. Uh, and I, you know, I have two disagreements with Noam, uh, and one is on this mantra of the least worst, which just frankly hasn't worked. And of course, I'm a strong supporter of the BDS movement, which he is not. But otherwise, I admire him immensely. 